Hello my little butterflies and today I'm going to be reviewing Alalira by Chantel Godori. Hi guys, so I am going to be reviewing Alalira today as I just said. And I was sent a copy of this book by the author. She actually emailed me and actually gave me two choices between two of her books. If I wanted to read either one of them and do a review. And Alalira just sounded just so like um interested in me <laughs> and uh that's the one i chose i ended up giving it a four out of five stars there were things i liked and there were also a couple things that i didn't like you guys know i'm completely honest with my reviews whether i got it from the review i mean whether i got it from the author or the publishing company i'm going to be completely honest with what i read but i overall i really did like this book okay so this is a ya fantasy retelling actually of the grim fairy tale version of this story which i never heard of before so um i don't think i want to read it now because i think it's going to ruin it for me but i've never heard of this before anyway so reading this is like really fresh eyes because i don't even know what to compare it to if you guys don't know which I don't think you guys should. It came out August 27th last year. So I was supposed to read it. She, she did give it to me after it came out. But I did wait to read it till December. Because I felt like it was like a wintry type read. So I thought it was going to get me into like the wintry mood. And it did. Um, this is about a girl named. I think her name is pronounced Aurelia. And she lived, She is the princess of Trenin. And the king and the queen. Uh has this very weird relationship i should say um there's a lot of rumors going on in the castle about them but the queen dies and she has this golden hair so she makes the king promise that he will only remarry a girl that has golden hair like hers because since she died the only child she had was aurelia and she was a girl and he needed a boy as an heir to the throne she never could give him a boy so on her deathbed, she made him promise to only marry a girl with golden hair. He searched and he searched for years, and then he started to look at his own daughter, who has the same golden hair as her mother. And he decided that he wanted to marry her, so she can give him an heir to the throne. And she was very naive at first. She didn't really notice this attention. But her maid, Myra, did. And she was like, just be careful. And there were rumors going on about that, too. She just told her to be careful. And so when she found out that the king was trying to pursue her as a queen, she made him promise to bring her four things. And that would be the only way that he would marry her. It was supposed to be impossible gifts so that he would never be able to marry her. She wanted um, three dresses. One made of the rays of the sunlight. One made of um, stars. I think like moon and stars or something like that. And the third one, I can't remember what that one was supposed to be made of. No, you know what? It's two dresses and she, was supposed to, she wanted a coat made from a hundred different furs. When the king fulfilled this, that's when she decided it was time to run away. And she runs into this town, meets this beautiful prince. Well, I'm guessing he's beautiful. We don't know, but I'm guessing he's very handsome. His name is Prince Klaus, and she starts to fall in love with him. But the twist of that is he's already promised to marry another princess in another town. But she escapes to this town with the with the coat of a hundred furs, and she's keeping herself hidden. No one knows who she's it, who she is, and she doesn't want to give up her identity for fear of being returned back to her kingdom. That is what this is about, you guys. Tell me that didn't sound interesting. Just from the fact that he wanted to marry his own daughter, I was like, what in the hell am I getting myself into? What the hell? I need to read that. And I did, and it was very great. So you guys know, when I do my reviews, I kind of like to do a sandwich kind of thing. I like to do good, bad, and then good. That way I'm starting good and ending on a good note and putting the bad in the middle. So that way I'm not ending off on a sour note. So, first of all, I really love the rising action. Like, all of the rising action leading up to, like, the big bang of the story. It's like, it was really, you could feel that build up reading. It's like, oh my god, things are starting to get worse and worse. And you started to get, like, more tense reading it. And it's like, oh my Jesus, what in the hell is going to happen? So, she did perfectly doing that. You know, keeping me, like, you know, angsty about what was going on, what was about to happen. And I'm glad for that. I also feel like the amount of imagery used in this story was like perfectly on point. Because I feel like if I close my eyes, 
I could really picture everything I was reading just from her words. And I just think that it's great when a book can do that for me and I could just see exactly what she's describing to me. Because I feel like if I can't picture what you're describing, then that's that's a, a no-no for me. I need to be able to picture this world and, and picture the people and picture what's going on in my mind because that's the good thing about reading. You know, you can imagine it yourself. And I think that's what I felt like was going on. And I just, I, I loved her description her description was on point she also did a very good job with the characters like this story really made you want to get involved with the characters like just to slap the shit out of them like slap some sense into them like i just wanted to slap the king and be like what the fuck is wrong with you like this is your daughter this is your own you know blood like you gave like you made her this is not some other man's daughter it's your child like this is your dna like what is wrong with you like what is, what is wrong with you like you get it together in the head i just wanted to fix him and with Alalira, well aurelia she didn't change her name to Alalira yet um, until she ran away, but Aurelia, I wanted to slap the shit out of her too, and be like, Put the baby like that, yourself, get some confidence, you know? I wanted to slap the shit out of her, like, get it together. She just really made me want to get it, like, just, I've never wanted to slap characters so bad before in my life. Like, I just really wanted to give it to her. And, like, you really get, um, genuinely emotional for the characters. Like, you really feel genuine emotions for them. Like, you get feelings for them, because I was like, really yeah. fucked up doing the rape scene and like which that brings me to tell you guys like there is a, i think there's a rape trigger to me when i'm reading the book no matter how you know rough or violent or how you know little of a rape scene it is i still like to try to add in that there may be a rape trigger for some people i just wouldn't feel right if i didn't say because i don't know what people's situations are there there may be a rape trigger in this book but it's only one scene so i don't under, i don't know if you got how you guys you know operate through that but it's only one scene so if you still want to read it that's fine it on, it's only one scene but it really fucked me up like i would sit there like oh oh my god like i was like really like how like <sighs> Like, I was really messed up. I was at work, and I was just like, why did I read this here? I was just like, I just felt so bad, you know? Like, so there is a rape scene in here, and it's it's pretty it's pretty visual, and it's pretty brutal. I guess you should say it's, it's, it's pretty rough. So I just want to throw that out there to warn you guys ahead of time. It's more of before the half mark of the book. It's before you hit that half point, so just to let you guys know. Then, um, still... On the character side, I really appreciate the fact that Alalira, because she, when she ran away, she changed her name to Alalira. When she, like, didn't fall head over heels, like, love at first sight with Prince Klaus the first time that she saw him. I really appreciate that because, like, I, I just, I just, I would have been very pissed off if she would have just opened up to him, like, a, a minute after meeting him. It, that just wouldn't have been realistic. This was very realistic that she, like, stayed closed off for a while. And you can actually see that, like, you can really see that she was struggling with wanting to say something. But she was scared that she was going to get caught and that somebody was going to send her back. And I just really appreciated that, that you can see, like, the, the reality in this character. That it's like when something like that happens... You don't really want to open up the very first chance somebody, you know, tells you you can trust me. You know, she actually, you know, has some doubt about it. So, I'm, I appreciated that fact of it. But, at the same time, I just find it really hard to believe that no one, like, recognized her. Except for one person that had seen her before at a ball and she stood in her own castle. But, I just find it really hard to believe that literally no one else, like, you know, could make her out after she took the coat off. It seemed like nobody else, you know, recognized her. I seriously doubt that. Like, I just find that hard to believe. I didn't really like that part because I'm like, who that? If you're a princess, especially knowing everything that's been going on in that kingdom lately, who wouldn't recognize you? You know, I just find that very hard to believe. And at some point, I did start to grow tiresome and bored of Klaus's and Alalira's kind of courtship of sorts, I guess you would call it, or whatever, the little dance they were doing. I did start to grow tiresome and bored of it. It was just, it was some areas like you could have took a little bit out because it was starting to get a little boring. And I just, it wasn't doing it for me after a while. Like, it just started to drag on in some places and it started to feel just like a little bit dry to me. And I'm just like, okay, we can cut it now, you know. I was good with what we had. We could just cut this little piece out and that little piece out, you know, and I would have been okay with it. But again, at the same time, I'm just so happy it wasn't like love at first sight. Sorry, guys, could have just played with, um, 
a tamarind. So if you hear that, I'm sorry. But like I, I like I was saying, I'm happy that it wasn't love at first sight or what I thought it was gonna be from reading a little bit of the story. I thought it was gonna be a love triangle at first, so I'm happy it wasn't. You know, I'm just like glad that it wasn't because I, I wasn't really feeling a love triangle in this story. So I'm glad that it didn't happen. So I'm very thankful for that, you know, because I think it kind of would have ruined it a little bit for me if it was a love triangle and if it was insta love. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little happy about that. I was expecting more of a search party from Trinan looking for Alalira since she did like run away and if she was a princess that ran away and you want her to marry this king. I was looking for more of a search party especially seeing that she was only in the next town over and nobody came there to look for her i i'm like really okay so i i, I really was expecting more of a search party more of like an on the run kind of thing to happen but it didn't and that kind of you know soured the mood for me a little bit because i'm like where is everybody that should be looking for her that she should be hiding from no one came to look for her so i'm just like okay it's almost like it's like it's almost like she was kind of forgotten about until it was convenient for the story to kind of pick her up. Like, it, it's almost like the, the, the kingdom was kind of, like, like Trinan was kind of forgotten about. Like, her, like, it, it's, it's almost like she just kind of put them on the back burner until it was convenient to put them back in the story. And I just, I didn't like it. Then when we reached the, the halfway mark to where she had actually ran away from the kingdom, I started to feel like we were reading two different stories from what we were reading before she ran away. Because what we started reading after she ran away just felt like a whole different story. And that's not a good thing. Like, it didn't feel like it was all together. It felt like I went from one book to another book. And then in the end, then I kind of felt like the books were together. But from the first half to that that section from her actually running away I just felt like we were in two different books and that's not really something that I wanted in this book and I also wish there was more of a sense of I, I got more of a sense of urgency from Alalira like in actually hiding because reading a book you have to realize that she was only gone a couple of days not months not weeks she was only gonna it felt like it seemed like for reading it was only a couple of days like she looked it seemed like she just decided to do away with the coat in maybe three days and i'm like if you're so scared that somebody's gonna see you like come looking for you you didn't really keep your jacket on that long you know so i just wish she had more of a sense of urgency to hide because i it to me it seemed like she would lose hide and seek sorry but by the end of this book i was really gritting from it like my smile was from here to here like at 2 30 in the morning people i mind you i finished this 2 30 in the morning okay and it was amazing okay it was january 3rd which was yesterday but i'm pretty sure i'm not gonna put this video up today but 2 30 in the morning you guys i finished this book and i was gritting from ear to ear it's like the end of this book had me like like pumped up because i was like yes tell him stand up for her i was all into it it's like the end of this really reminded me of one night with the king if you guys have ever seen that movie it's a biblical movie it's about esther it's so good y'all need to like look at it like before i looked at it i didn't think i was gonna like it either but y'all need to check it out like the ending really reminded me of that and i was just like yes y'all you know so it's like i was just like even though i'm smiling because the end of this book like did it for me i was like yes 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 i was just i can't even put it in words so it's like to wrap all of this up it's like this book was like savage as fuck but at the same time it was swoon worthy you know it was like you know like you was falling in love with the characters too and falling in love with their love but it was savage and like the bad thing though was that it was kind of expecting like it was it like you could call it see what was going to happen like reading this you kind of knew what the ending was going to be like you just didn't know how it was going to get there so you kind of see you kind of know what's going to happen so that's a bad thing but at the same time you didn't know how it was going to get there so that's kind of a good thing so actually being able to expect what was going to happen in the end didn't really bother me that much and I don't think it's going to bother you guys that much, but we're all different people. But it didn't bother me that much because you could tell how the story was going to go. Like from the beginning, you could really tell how it was going to end. Just from reading the synopsis, you could tell. So maybe that's why it didn't really hurt me because I kind of saw it anyway. But I just didn't see the events leading up to that. 
So at the end of the day, I still recommend this book just to warn some of you guys. Again, it, it, I think there is should be a tri uh, rape trigger warning on this book. So if you have any rape triggers, this is this should be one of them um, that you should maybe you know think about reading first. Even though it's just one scene, it's still there. But I still recommend this. I gave it a four out of five stars. This was amazing. I, it's almost to the point where I kind of want to go buy it, even though it's like I got to read it for free. I really feel like I want to buy it anyway, because I think this is a really good book, and I think other people would enjoy it as well. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about this book. Thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Fuck it up, ah, 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 let's go.